This is the Jackery Explorer 1500 lithium power station, which some people might call a solar generator. Other people call the sun a solar generator. I prefer the term lithium power station. This is basically a big box that contains a very powerful lithium ion battery inside or an array of battery cells. The battery is attached to a very powerful inverter and it outputs clean sine wave electricity to a variety of outlets that you'll find on the face of the unit. Why do you get one of these things? Well, if you are a van camper or an RV traveler, or you just want some backup electricity at your house, these devices are incredibly handy. So this particular unit has 1,488 watt hours of capacity. And 1,800 watts of AC output. What does that mean exactly? It's really, really big. For example, you could run this professional 1000 watt blender continuously for more than an hour. The benefit of having this large Jackery unit versus some of the smaller ones is that it really opens up a wide range of devices that you could potentially power. I'm talking about coffee makers, microwave ovens, hair dryers, a lot of those appliances that really consume large amounts of electricity, this can handle, at least for a certain amount of time. In fact, this beast can power up to seven different devices simultaneously. Everything from professional blenders to toaster ovens. Mmm, smell that taco bake. I know a lot of you out there use CPAP machines to sleep. If, for example, your CPAP machine requires 70 watts to operate, this device could power it for 18 hours. What can you power with it? Well, what can you not power with it? I wouldn't really recommend purchasing one of these with the intentions of powering an RV air conditioner because even if you could somehow manage to pull it off, you wouldn't be able to power the air conditioner for more than say 45 minutes or an hour. But for pretty much everything else, every type of electric appliance, this will probably be able to get it done. Panini con Isabella Rosalini. So let's take a look at the face of the unit and quickly review some of the features. In the upper left, you're gonna see the input ports. And what's really interesting here is that you will see two input ports. So you can deliver two separate power sources to recharge your batteries more quickly. All right, so check this out. I have not one, but two AC adapters. And you can see we're at 79% battery power right now. So I'm gonna plug in an AC adapter and look at the input. So now the battery is receiving 288 watts and will be charged in 2.0 hours. But what happens if I had a second AC adapter? Give it a second. Now the input jumps way up to 570 watts. Now it will be fully charged in 1.3 hours. There are seven output ports. On the left, you've got your DC output ports. You have one USB-C, two USB-A. You've got three AC outlets. And on the upper right, you've got your good old-fashioned 12-volt cigarette lighter style port. This unit is equipped with a nice display. You can just tap the display button and you will see your capacity remaining in your device. And on the left, you'll see whatever kind of input wattage you're receiving and on the right, whatever the unit might be outputting. The display screen surface is glossy and reflective and can be hard to read in bright sunlight. It turns off after a few seconds in order to conserve battery. All the outlets are regulated, so the voltage output does not drop as the battery level drops. This weighs about 33 pounds. You're going to want to grab it firmly by the handle, probably with both hands at times. And they do include a little flashlight on the right, although I probably won't be going hiking with my 33 pound flashlight anytime soon. But it's always nice to have extra light when you're camping. But what's really cool about this one, I think, is this dual input. I have here the AC adapter 
that comes with the unit and there's the adapter brick and I'm going to plug in the AC input and you're going to see so right now we're getting around 285 watts in AC electricity into those battery cells and at this current recharge rate we could recharge the unit to 100% in 1.7 hours but check this out I have here a DC input. Now I've plugged this into the cigarette lighter outlet in our Airstream travel trailer and watch what happens when I plug in this second power input. So now we're going to see the power input jump from around 285 watts up to 372 watts. So our recharge time just dropped by about 33% and of course you can also deliver solar power to your unit in this way using the Solar Saga 100 watt solar panels. So they've really improved the recharging of the unit. And when you look at you know what this unit can do, well, in some ways the question is what can it not do? This is my wife's current hair dryer. Christy tells me that she typically dries her hair high fan and low heat. So this is high fan and low heat on the hair dryer. When I tap the display button, we'll see uh, it's outputting 700 watts of power. So I'm gonna dial up to medium heat and you're gonna see the power output to jump up to 1160 watts or so. Now if I go to high heat, the power draw is going to jump over 1500 watts and I think that's enough to trigger the circuit breaker. Mm -hmm. And that's what just happened. Although it can deliver 3,600 watts of surge peak electricity, if there's a continuous draw of more than 1,800 watts, you can expect the unit to shut down. By the way, it powers our portable air compressor with ease. Now you can hear a cooling fan has activated in the Jackery. This unit is mostly silent, except on these occasions when the fan kicks on to cool it off. And that does make a point about another feature of this unit. It's got a BMS or battery management system built into it that protects the battery cells against uh, high voltage input situations and also protects them in terms of the thermodynamics. Like if it gets too hot in there, then the fan will kick on to protect the cells. and it will shut off to protect the longevity of those cells. Jackery says the cells have a lifespan of around eight years. So it's got a two-year warranty, but the cells should last up to eight years. All right, guys. Although this unit is not intended to power an RV air conditioner, I know you'll be curious to see how it fares. So why not? We're going to hook up the Jackery to our RV, and you'll see I have a 30-amp to 20 amp dog bone here and I'm going to plug up the RV and hit the display and then we're going to kick on the air conditioner and see what happens. In bright sunlight it can be hard to tell whether the unit is turned on or off because the indicator lights are so small. AC outlets are on kind of hard to see it there but that green light is illuminated and I'm gonna go turn on the air conditioner and we'll see what happens so whenever you're trying to power an RV air conditioner with any kind of device that might be slightly underpowered you want to switch your refrigerator over to propano so we've done that and now our Airstream is connected to the Jackery and is pulling power from the Jackery 1500 watts from the Jackery. I have our current limit set at 15 amps, but right now it's using all of that power to recharge our house batteries, which are at 99%. So we have a, a bit of a tricky situation here. I'm gonna turn on the air conditioner and just see what happens. I think if our house batteries were on 100% float charge, then we'd be able to do this. So what's happening now 
we're still pulling 1500 watts out of the Jackery. We've gotten our house batteries to 100%, but they're still in bulk charge mode. If that was at float charge, then we would have a better test of what we're getting from shore power. I'm gonna dial up the current limit and see what happens. This will probably overload our Jackery. Yeah, so I expect the Jackery to overload. Because right now we're pulling almost 2,000 watts out of the Jackery. So right now the Jackery is sending almost 2,000 watts to our trailer. And you can see the display is really very helpful. It says that we could power this certain demand for 0.4 hours right now. So let's say 25 minutes. But surprisingly, the Jackery has not overloaded. Okay, the power demand from the trailer just dropped down to around 900 watts. When the air conditioner doesn't need the compressor, the power demand really drops way down. So I'm going to say that the Jackery has passed this test with flying colors. Surprisingly so. I expected it to overload, but it didn't. This would only run an RV air conditioner for around 30 to 45 minutes. So it's not really a solution for that. And I will point out our RV air conditioner has been modified with a soft start. So it doesn't require nearly as much electricity to start the air conditioner and start the compressor as an unmodified air conditioner. All right, so I wanna take a quick look at the Jackery Solar Saga. 100, this is a 100 watt portable solar panel. You see they fold up nice and flat and you can unfold them and voila, you have an instant 100 watt solar panel. Jackery recommends that you pair two of these to recharge the Explorer 1500. I will say, if you do so, in ideal conditions, it will still take nine and a half hours to recharge this beast and that would be you know, assuming a bright sunny day. It will involve a fair amount of schlepping. Who loves schlepping? You have to schlep your solar panels around and probably position them around to get ideal sun. And I'll just show you a couple of nice features. I like that they have this magnetic closure. So they close nice and tight and snug and they've got a built-in handle. And you can see on the back, there's this little kickstand on each side that attaches with Velcro. The construction seems to be fine. This is kind of a rugged canvas. This is plastic. So they've made a couple of interesting design changes to this year's version of this 100 watt solar panel. It's a little bit more slim and trim and streamlined and they've kind of improved this whole setup with regard to the cord. You can see the cord is stored in this little bag that zips up tight next to the solar panel, which I really like. And they moved the USB ports. You've got a USB-C and a USB-A charge port directly on the solar panel. In the previous year's model, those ports were more exposed up towards the handle portion of the panel. In this new version, they are inside this little pocket. So I guess in theory, if you're charging devices, you could zip them up in the pocket. And so they give you a really nice long cable. So you can stretch your panels out and move them around to chase the sun as the sun moves across the sky. You also get this little adapter. This is a parallel adapter that allows you to plug two solar panels into one input on the Jackery. So in theory, you could have four solar panels going simultaneously to recharge this unit. I like the big rugged built-in handle on the top. And I also dislike it because you can't lay anything on top of the unit uh, because of this large protruding handle. But on the other hand, you always know that you have a sturdy, reliable handle. I think the solar panels are a viable option if you are a tent camper, if you are a van camper, if you're a big boondocker and you wanna go sit up in the desert in quartzite for a while, then these little portable solar panels might make a lot of sense for you. 
Overall, I've had mixed results recharging the Explorer 1500 using solar panels. Mixed at best. And note that the panels are not weatherproof, so that means more schlepping. From our standpoint, I will primarily be charging our unit using the DC power charger, just charge it directly out of the good old fashioned cigarette lighter in our Airstream, or using the dual AC input. Rumor has it that someone at Jackery has made the brilliant decision to include two AC adapters with every Explorer 1500 package. Dual AC charging is absolutely brilliant and highly recommended. But with two AC adapters, you can truly rapid charge this unit. So that's it guys, a look at the Jackery Explorer 1500 lithium power station, also known as a solar generator. What do you think? I can definitely foresee us traveling with this, even though we have a powerful solar setup with our Airstream, this will increase our capacity by about 20%. And we are constantly recharging cameras, drone batteries, and of course, cell phones and laptops and that sort of thing. So they're really useful devices to have around. You know, these clock in at around $1,600. I know that since they just launched this device, they had a launch sale. So you might go in and check out and see if they are offering any kind of discount and read some reviews and see what other owners are saying about the unit. I think if you are a van camper, if you travel with a teardrop, if you're wanting a quick turnkey solution that will deliver most of the benefits of a fancy solar package, this is a good way to go. So I'm impressed with the unit. What do you think? Chime in, post a comment, let us know. This has been yet another episode of Long Long Honeymoon where we get into a low loho state of mind. I'm Sean. Until next time, what do we say here? We say low loho.